Hello, everybody, and welcome to the very first uh, talking to about Back to the M Club uh, today with Nick from Spain. Uh, very welcome, uh, Nick. Uh, very nice having you today because Thank it's you. a very special day today because you're from England, but you are, you are living now in, in, in Spain. We get to this uh, a little bit later. Um, but today is a very special day because 65 years ago, Bert Troutman was playing the FA Final Cup um, and he was uh, getting a legend with this because he broke his neck, uh, finished the game as a goalkeeper and they won. Um, so, and it's still, you know, the reason we, we, we talk online about this today is because of, uh, as I said, Troutman's legacy. And it still brings, as you can see, as everybody can see today, people together all over the world, um, because, um, yeah, uh, he uh, was uh, feeling very confident in uh, bringing people together and to talk about sports and to talk about life and uh, to, to see how it goes in different countries and what uh, we can do it for each other. So you're not only a football uh, enthusiast, you're, you like sports uh, at all. And uh, we do know each other since uh, almost uh, 20 years. So um, let's start with uh, to talk about our passion in, in sports. You know, it's, it's not an easy time at the moment, uh, whether in, uh, in Spain or in the UK or in Germany. What do you think about the perspectives we have what could be possible and when to do sports as we know with the with the virus this pandemic yeah, yeah. yeah. it's a great question uh, i think that things will drastically change this year uh, they're introducing fans into the european championships i believe 25 percent uh, of the stadium uh, 25 percent of the U europa cup final in poland i believe they uh, introducing 19,000 fans um, and gen generally, countries are slowly bringing people back together. And it's a simple case of, uh, sadly, trial and error to start with. But if you've been vaccinated uh, and you can prove it, uh, I don't see why everyone can't be together in a stadium because it drastically, massively changes sports. Massive. It's a huge, huge difference. Right. So how is the, the situation in Spain, actually? Spain, I think, is the same as the rest of the world. There's no fans, but we uh, there's no lockdown. So um, all the shops are open, the bars. We, we've never been in lockdown since we lived here, which is uh, from May last year. I believe they had a, had a small one March to, to May. But they, if so many cases per thousand uh, are admitted to hospital, they kind of close things earlier and then they close the perimeter of the town or the perimeter of the province. So you can still travel freely. Everybody is at work. Nobody is at home. Uh, full mask as, as most of the world is. And to be honest, what I hear from the UK and my friends who can't go anywhere, that we seem to have got it got it quite quite right here. It's good. We can go out and have a normal life. Right. So, so it's different. What do you hear from the UK, your home country and the Isle of Man? Uh, Isle of Man has been... Uh, been very small lockdowns, uh, but you're not allowed into the Isle of Man because it's a small island within the UK. And the UK have had a massive lockdown. They've been in lockdown for, for another three months, so they're, they're, no one's happy there. Um, but thankfully for us, we, we have nothing. It's, um, it's, it's hard to understand there's a problem where, where we live in the mountains. And with the town open, um, it's been difficult. But uh, yes, yeah, Spain have done well, uh, but the, the football is all on Chelsea. Uh, won last night against Real Madrid, right? And uh, so they're probably hurting a little bit. But um, I've heard a lot of fans gather outside the stadiums when there's a game on. Um, I've only heard this from a friend who went to Granada against Manchester in the, in the quarterfinals of the Europa League, and everyone goes in the bars and drinks and has a nice night. They just don't go into the into the ground. So I don't see why they can't open the stadium soon. Right. So if we talk about football, so there's a big issue at the moment uh, um, about the Super League. There's a discussion going on and some say it's a cover up for raising money in the Champions League. What's your opinion about it? Um, it's a great question. I, what, what's been misconstrued is that football in, from 1993 onwards 
became a multi-billion dollar global industry because as you know, Troutman, he was probably paid one, one pound a week, uh, which is the equivalent of, of nothing is the equivalent of that now with the wages, but billions of pounds was pumped into the sport that the most high profile, highest paid athletes on the planet. So you are going to attract billionaires who own clubs and if they don't believe they're, they're getting the money that they deserve, that they give to the game, they, they're looking at other options. Now, people are looking at this negatively. You're taking football away from the fans, blah, blah, blah. But the truth is, and this happens in Formula One and a little bit in golf, if you um, are playing a semi-final of the Champions League and you're Real Madrid and you're playing someone like uh, Porto, and Real Madrid are arguably generating 85% of the revenue of the broadcast fees. Why do Porto get paid the same? And I think this is their, their problem. They wanted to, to say, listen, we're bringing more to the sport. We want, it, uh, we want to take more money from it. But fundamentally, it's wrong. No one wants to play Barcelona every week or twice a year or Real Madrid. It's, not, it's just not exciting. You want, to, you want to play them every four, three five years it's a look of the draw and if you anything in life if you had the same teams you can't get relegated it was a very very badly designed plan but I understood why they were doing it but um badly designed not fair you need to be relegated if it's gonna if we're gonna exist and I think they were a little bit too obnoxious and the 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 power of the people even prime ministers came out and um it was shut down I can't believe how fast it was shut down, but that's respect to the um, to the public for that. All right. What do you think? How would uh, Brad Troutman, uh, if he would be still alive in uh, those days, uh, react to this? How would he cope? How would he handle this kind of situation? The the the, fact, the problem is is that in that era, people seemed to be a little bit nicer in the world, um, and there wasn't so much. Um, I don't think this would have existed back then, so it would have been a shock. Like my father played professionally in the '60s and '70s, and and he, he doesn't he doesn't watch football. Uh, he didn't watch it from about 2000, and it was because sorry, battery. Yeah, you're back. Yeah, because uh, it's changed so much. It wasn't interesting to him, so he he lost focus and Troutman. He, he likes Sir Bobby Charlton, Sir Alex Ferguson, people like this. Yeah. They wouldn't have any of this nonsense because it wasn't about money then. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's hard to compare the eras because he just, I don't think they would have been involved. Uh, I liked it at all, at all. So it was a totally different story 65 years ago when he played the, the, the FA Cup final. And um... Well, there was 110,000 people in the stadium uh, on that. <laughs> <laughs> right. in fact, now there's like uh, 60, 70 in some big stadiums so it's insane but the the reach wasn't so global, it was only on uh, in your own country, you couldn't really reach out to millions of, of countries and watch the 1956 final on, on TV anywhere so there wasn't money there even though there were more fans at the game it's, it's such a hard one how they were paid so little um, and they weren't even real superstars back then really they were just very famous in their own country, unless there was a World Cup. Um, mm. And yeah, different era, impossible to compare. Don't know how they would have reacted. I don't think this would have happened. They wouldn't have been known by billionaires, the, the clubs. So um, so yeah, very difficult, but uh, no nonsense back then. So I, I don't think they would have been happy at all. Yeah, sounds like that. So um, some people say they would travel the world for Troutman because he was such a great guy and such a great character. We talked about earlier um, that you might have the possibility to put up the Troutman exhibition at Absolutely. your place in Spain because yeah. the, the last few years he, he lived in Spain and it's a great place what you're um, um, trying to build up at the moment. Yeah. So I talked to, to one of the gentlemen from Bremen who made the exhibition. And he said, yes, you're very welcome to do this. And um, he would like to support you to do that. So please tell us about your place in Spain and what's your goal? We, we live in the mountains and um, we're building a, a dome 
accommodation, small health and fitness retreats so people can stay here, but they stay in domes, which is quite unique. And there's not yeah. many like this in the world, especially not in Spain. And you're going to come here. I mean, it's silent. I'm outside. Um, we are in the mountains and we have fresh air and uh, lots of walking areas and hiking and cycling. We want people to come and be fit. And uh, we just live in yeah, a piece of bliss in the world. And we've got thousands of meters of land that we can host anything that, that, that uh, comes along. And it'd be very fascinating to see who does come and how far they would travel. And uh, yeah, we, we're, we're into fitness, as you know, and, and health and sport and, and football is passionate here. Not so much with my wife, but uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, no, it'd be fantastic to host. We have a roof terrace. We, um, places where we can have a beautiful view and some food and chat football. And uh, yeah, our goal is health and fitness now. And, um, but not personal training, like, like, you know, I did and how it used to be. Right. So, so um, yeah, it's completely, completely different. So, but it's about sports and uh, getting people together from all over the world. As you did, you travel the world, you've seen places. So now you build up a, a nice place for yourself, but you like to invite people from all over the world to think about life and uh, and health and everything. Absolutely, yeah, It'd be fantastic. Everyone is welcome. Yeah, the more people, the better because we can get this story out. It's um, I'm surprised it's not gone so big with the the movie. It needs to be on Netflix or something, I think, and everyone would be uh, gobsmacked at the at the story. It's it's quite remarkable, and I'm glad it's been brought to my attention because. We knew uh, we knew nothing as as I mentioned. It's um, it's a great story. Yeah, so so you're up to to see the new movie as well, The Keeper. Um, so um, then you can get more the uh, the, the spirit maybe. Yeah, um, excited for that. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's what all about. So, so um, we will start in a, in a few days in a few weeks with another exhibition. It's called Eastern All Stars here in in, in Turingia. Uh, to show that there are not only footballers like Ronaldo, everybody knows, even in the, in the Eastern Europe, there were a lot of examples of great players uh, and uh, coaches as well, like Valery Libanovsky too. And uh, so is that something you're interested in as well? Or the other, uh, hosting other different people like Troutman exhibitions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, For anyone, example, yeah, but, you, but you, your place as well, but we do that here, so you might think uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, people who are interested in it as well, and uh, and you too. Yeah, absolutely. I think that these stories need to be told because I didn't know about this, and there's there's lots of people who know. Um, the, for every Troutman, there must be one or two people who've had such an amazing story, maybe nothing to do with the war and the, the German-English right. uh, must be another story of maybe how they had nothing and they and they they provided for their family from from like the the ghettos in Brazil. You hear all those stories of the Brazilian footballers, yeah. the fantastic stories out there from the favelas. Yeah, I think you and me know a bit about Brazil, and it was uh, the favelas are you know desolate. So how come these some some of these amazing people came from nothing to become a footballer? Not even football. I mean Formula One. And all these stories, like all kinds of sports, yeah. There must be hundreds of stories out there that that the public don't really know about. Who be really interested because um, this one has been a really interesting one, really interesting story. Right. So the Euro will take place uh, this year, 2021, and this will be the time where we're going to show the exhibition here, the Eastern Ulsters. Uh, but if we talk about Euro, um, the so-called Brexit. Was it good for football or was it so-and-so? What do you think? I don't think football's been affected by Brexit. Oh, no. Has it been affected by Brexit? I think, yes, you can't. European players now have to meet a slightly different criteria to play in the UK. So right. I think what the world is going to change um, with employment rights. So it's not you can't just come in to play football. It might be great for English football because... You might not get so many uh, Europeans taking the lower league places uh, from the English, which is not a bad thing. You know, I'm sure it happens in the world, but mostly in England. Most most players from another country 
in international football play in England. Does that, does that that come across correct? So there's not many Spanish play in France. Right. There's not Italians play in Spain. Do you know what I mean? Lots. Everyone plays in England. Hungarians, Polish, Germans, Spanish, Italians. Everyone. And so maybe it changes things for the for the the UK people to make for for their job. But I need to brush up on that. I think there's a law coming in that you have to meet a certain criteria to allow be allowed to play now Brexit. Brexit's a bad thing, by the way, but we'll talk about that another time. All right, I see. So um, if we talk about the European Championship, is it worth to have such an event without any audience or is it just a political decision that it takes place this year? Uh, you always need sport. Sport on the TV with no fans is better than no sport at all. So uh, I don't think the pandemic um, really affects it. It will change it for sure. But as we mentioned before, they're bringing 25% of the ground. I think they're going to they're gonna fill. So there'll be some atmosphere. It's not going to be dead. Um, but if you, yeah, sport, sport is sport. I mean, if this carried on forever, then I think if football would be in serious trouble. But this is only for, for the short term. And, and sport without fans is... Is it's not really it's not really that exciting because what we found is in golf, you've got lots of vast different winners of of major events because of, there's been no crowd because right. people react to crowds. So um, I think it's been good for some young people coming in the sport. They haven't had all the hassle of of these tens of thousands of fans. It's been interesting, and then then I go back to no, but no, the European Championship should go ahead. Um, sport shouldn't stop because of, because of this pandemic. If people don't want to play, if they're scared, they, they shouldn't play. But I think they're in a, a safe bubble and I can't wait, to be honest. I'm really excited. It's good looking good for England. And um, there's no clear favourite this time for a long time, which is, is slightly exciting. Right. If we, if we take a look to, to the next year, um, the UEFA Women's uh, Euro 20. 22. So uh, what's your reflection on this? I mean, in, in Germany, um, the football clubs like uh, Arsenal and Chelsea are praised examples for women, as examples for, for women's football. Uh, how do you see it uh, from your British uh, perspective? Um, I believe women's football is coming on massive. Um, I don't know too much about it, but it's now in the English papers every, every week. Um, right. I believe that this um, America do really well, if, if I'm correct. Um, but no, it's fantastic. I mean, no sport, nothing in life should just be for one, one sex or one race or anything. It's um, football, women's football. I believe will be massive in, in our lifetime, and they'll be earning uh, close to the men. Um, the, and uh, yeah, it's quite exciting actually because they're pretty skilled. Women, it's it's amazing how how awesome the they are and and you know maybe it's a bit more exciting watching women's football and um, because because men's football is I mean it twenty five years I mean it's just different and um, sometimes I believe especially in tennis uh, that the women's final is much more entertaining than the men's so maybe there's something that 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 we don't know about yet but. It's growing massive. Uh, every club in England is is behind it. There's lots of people uh, involved. It's in the newspapers a lot. Uh, there's female journalists now. A lot of female sports journalists. Um, a, div a diverse range that are in the UK. I don't know what it's like in Germany. Uh, yeah, it's good. I think women's football looks looks positive for the future. Right. It's interesting to hear. So, um, if we talk about great characters in in sports. There was the so-called Belfast, uh, Belfast uh, boy, George Best, and he did his best to unify uh, his home country. But at the moment, it looks like that the country is, uh, the conflict is, is growing again. Um, how is it recognized in the UK? Uh, if it is recognized, you know? The conflict? Yeah. Uh, I, I think they're slightly nervous. There's nothing like the 70s where I grew up and it was, um, it was uh, very dangerous, but uh, so interesting question, bit above my pay grade. I think um, things need to happen fast with this this Northern Irish and Republic border. Um, and I don't know many footballers actually who are, who have been talking about this, but uh, I think this hopefully is a thing that's nipped in the bud quite fast. I don't believe the Irish want too much trouble anymore. Right. Um, but 
but they um, if you put a border in a, in a town uh, or a country that doesn't want a border, there's going to be problems. I mean, I don't think the Europeans uh, uh, who run the, the um, uh, what's the word, the European Council really thought the Irish problem through because it's not really their problem. You know, it's a UK problem and they, they know it's, it's, it's bad, but I don't think it was really thought through properly. And um, yeah, I think it's a, it's a blue torch uh, fire. It, it can go off at any moment, but I can't see it going back to those bad, bad right. days of nail bombs and, and all that stuff that, um, that I remember as a child. We, we, we were told not to go to Ireland as a child. It was very strange. I didn't go to Ireland until I was 30. And I lived um, about 18 nautical miles from the island. Obviously, by boat and plane, you don't just drive. But it was just something we didn't do as a child. But that was wrong. That was bad, bad publicity. We should have gone. Ireland is a beautiful place. Beautiful place. I see. Um, please allow me to talk about, at the end of our meeting today, um, about the oldest football club in the world, because it's an English club. Don't tell me. Uh, Notts County. No, it's Sheffield FC. Sheffield, okay. okay. <laughs> so, uh, 85. 1857. Wow. Wow. Okay. Fantastic. So, um, yeah, th th this is like, uh, the, it's called the, the roots of modern football. Yeah. In, in your country and in, in all over the world. So it's, fr but it's from your country. So what can you uh, tell the world about the roots of football? Uh, I didn't know Sheffield uh, were the first football team I always believed it was Notts County but um 1850 I mean wow that's that's insane but I think didn't the English invent the cricket as well that's another another story yeah I, I, don't, I mean I mean how does it start it's uh yeah it's very very nice to, to believe that your country started this global insane sport um but being so long ago and how we were brought up it's difficult to to think about but Uh, Sheffield, um, Wednesday, Sheffield City, massive rivalry for these two teams. I wonder what it was like back in the day. Did they have two teams then? Right. When did this come out? When did all this crazy, um, uh, not hate, but when did this crazy rivalry start? What year was that? When did that? That's quite interesting. But 1850, I think it would have been a slightly different game then. <laughs> sure. So you have the chance to go back to the roots of, uh, of football at your place in Spain now. I mean, to build up a pitch in the mountains <laughs> would be great, uh, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah, it's, the, the land is a bit thin for a football pitch, but we can easily have a, a massive five-a-side pitch. Um, but yeah, we, um, yeah, football, I like to get a little chipping green so we can practice our golf, but uh, no, no, football would be, um, would be fantastic because it brings kids together. And as you know, Kids love the ball sports and stuff, and uh, yeah, it'd be nice, really nice. But uh, let's get the let's get the health and fitness retreat going first, and then right. then we start about the football. Thank you, Nick, for having you today. It was my pleasure, and uh, I wish you all the best for your plans. Uh, thank you. It was a fantastic chat. Um, I'm surprised this is. Uh, being the first one uh, these stories need to come out don't need to come out they it's just better in the world if people knew certain things about history because uh, as we both know the the world war is is quite close still and it was was you can't imagine you know you can't you got people in the pandemic panicking because they can't get food can you imagine what the world war was like and um to then come out of that and everyone like got together and said, okay, let's make some peace. And this footballer came, can you imagine his life in his role of his job, which he had to do. And then he right. goes to the UK. It's just, you know, there are certain countries where you couldn't do that. If, you know, if you were Iran, Iraq, and you had a fight and you thought you were Iraqi, I'll just go to Iran and play for them. It's impossible. So it's, yeah, the political, um uh, fantasy story it's just it's just hard to believe to be honest but uh thanks thanks Mirko it's been fantastic um happy to do it again happy to host anything that you you think is is worthy right And, uh, thank you very happy. much we keep that in mind absolutely um,
the special uh, spirit of Troutman. And, yeah. Um, yeah. I say thank you very much again. Thank you. See you soon. Thank you, mate. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.